when someone has our back, we can go through anything and have it stay manageable. I'm Dr. Amy, your guide for transforming your trauma into your gift. You adapted to life experiences to survive, but you are not your trauma. So step one, creating a felt sense of safety. Why? Because that's what the trauma response needs. The trauma response will not feel safe coming out of the trauma response, will not feel safe coming out of the overwhelm until it can look around and be like, hey, I think I'm safe. Safe enough to do what? Safe enough to come out and face my stressors, face my fears, face the anxiety. And so then that's what step number two is. Okay, now we're back in that anxiety. We're back in that high energy state. What do we need? Well, that needs a felt sense of support. Because when someone has our back, we can go through anything and have it stay manageable. And then after that, once we have that felt sense of safety, once we have that felt sense of support, oh my goodness, then guess what comes? Then the expansion comes. And then we can look into processing. Then we can look into growth. Then we can look into ooh, the, the joy. It's actually not safe to tap into joy until we've worked with the trauma response and that stress response because then even joy is unsafe. Why? Because it brings up other stuff that's not safe. And so step one, if we want to resolve, process, rewire trauma, the first step is always creating a felt sense of safety. And now what if I sat here and I told you, come on, you should feel safe. I mean, look at your life, right? You're sitting in a nice place right now. No one's hurting you right now. What's wrong with you? You should feel safe. That's different than actually feeling safe. We can tell ourselves, I have told myself, Amy, what's wrong with you? You should feel this way. And then I feel, I have felt that my body betrays me when it can't keep up with my mind, when it doesn't feel those things. Because the mind cannot create a fake feeling. The body either feels safe or the body does not feel safe. And so part of this process is actually just doing a dive into our body. Does my body feel safe? I'm not asking my mind. <laughs> I'm asking my body. I'm asking my body. If there's been a master of someone who can live in their head, I will claim that trophy. And I will fight you for it if I have to. I will not fight you for it. I have lived in my head nearly all of my life that I could remember until I started doing this work. And I would tell myself what I should feel. And then would get very frustrated when I started having high autoimmune markers, when I started having chronic pain, when I started becoming overweight, when I started having anxiety and depression, got on two antidepressants and it still didn't really help because the body has its own stories, has its own experience. And the mind cannot tell the body what it should feel. But we haven't listened to our body. We're going over the lessons that I've learned the hard way. The first lesson that I had to learn was that we actually can't jump to processing without regulating our system first and actually learning how to keep it in that place of feeling manageable. What does that mean? Oh, well, that means having a felt sense of safety, having a felt sense of support. And then that processing piece is actually part of the expansion that we get to do once those two other steps are in place. And so if you want to process trauma safely, and I hope you wrote that word down, safely, if you want to process trauma safely, guess what? 
you actually need to start with your body and making sure that your body has a felt sense of safety first. That's the first step. We actually can't do support before we do safety. There's a specific order here. The trauma response needs safety. The stress response needs support. And we literally reverse engineer how the trauma response happened. And so there's three patterns that I want to show you. This is one pattern that I see in people where they are sympathetic dominant and they're always living in this high energy anxiety state. Their adrenaline is always going. They're always anxious, always anxious. Okay. The second pattern that I started to see are those people who are all the time in overwhelm. They're always feeling exhausted. They're always feeling overwhelmed, overwhelmed. They're just going through the motions. They're just going through life in a daze. But then there's this third pattern that happens in between those. And this is the pattern where somebody is going back and forth between anxiety and overwhelm all the time, usually all within the same day. And they, the more that they live with this pattern, the more that they start to live down here in overwhelm and the more they have to use things to pull them out of that, to get anything done. So this is where you will have people who wake up and they're like, Oh, I don't want it to be morning yet. Anybody want to raise their hand and say, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's been, that was me for a really long time. I wish I didn't, I wish it weren't morning. I want to keep sleeping. Sleeping. Sleep is actually one of the coping mechanisms for that overwhelmed place. And we just want to sleep until it's all over. Now, most of the time we can't. And so what do we do? Ooh, I don't like feeling this way. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to wake up and I'm going to drink a big cup of coffee. That'll wake me up. That'll give me energy. Or guess what? I'm going to eat food that wakes me up. Now, what many don't know is that the food that wakes you up is likely the food that you're having a sensitivity to or some type of reaction to. And that's why it wakes you up. And then a few hours later, you're in the crash or maybe you're reaching for sugar foods because sugar will temporarily give you that dopamine release and you feel more alive. And then you have the, the sugar crash. So we notice that we start doing things to keep ourselves out of the exhaustion. But then what happens by the end of the day, you guys? The exhaustion takes over, right? And the minute you relax, you actually don't relax, you fall into the collapse. And now you're sitting there and your mind is checking out. Your mind is completely wandering. You're tired. Everything irritates you because you don't have the energy for anything. And maybe you just want to sit in front of the TV, you turn on a movie. But even that, you realize that you're not really enjoying the movie. You're not really present. You're just kind of flat. You're just kind of numb. And then you start the whole next day the same way, finding ways to keep yourself out of the exhaustion only for it to eventually take over. If you are noticing any of these patterns, any of these three patterns, whether you are sympathetic dominant and always stressed, or if you are in this in-between space where you're like, no, I'm, I'm stressed, but then I'm overwhelmed and I'm stressed and then I'm overwhelmed. I'm back and forth. Or if this has been happening for so long that you are now noticing, ah, like I'm just now more in that overwhelm, low energy collapse state. Guess what you need? Like your body needs the essential sequence. That's what it needs. You don't need to go process trauma yet, it would not be safe. And guess what happens if we do things that are not safe? Hmm, let me show you. Let's go back to this slide because I want to show you that when we do things 
that are overwhelming to our system, like trying to process trauma before we have regulation skills in place, we start getting sick. This is where a lot of diseases actually hang out. Here I have chronic pain, but as I got to learn from my personal experience, it includes autoimmune conditions, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, all inflammation, including brain inflammation. So brain fog, decision fatigue, headaches, digestive issues, IBS, constipation, gut inflammation. All of those, all of those are a result of the freeze response. And so when we process trauma without the regulation skills in place, what will often happen is that we experience an increase in those physical symptoms and conditions. That's what happened to me. I would go to therapy, have this amazing processing session. I would leave emotional and exhausted because we had processed so much. Oh, look at me. I'm doing so much great work. And then guess what? The next five days, I was crashed. I wasn't able to go on my walks, wasn't able to go ride my bike. My energy level was so low, I would wake up with my joints hurting. My inflammation was back in my gut and my brain was just back into that. I'm just going through the motions, just, just trying to get through my day. I'm like, this can't be right. This can't be right. And it's not right because I did not know that I needed regulation first. I didn't even know about regulation, to be honest. And so I had to figure this out because this was my journey. This was my health. It wasn't from a textbook that I learned this. This has been me experimenting and then piecing together everything. So if you are noticing that you have any of these patterns, guess what you need? Your system needs this essential sequence. It needs safety first. It needs specific tools to be able to feel safe, not for your mind to tell you that you're safe, for you to feel, have your body feel safe, for it to start to be willing to open up. If it doesn't feel safe, it's not gonna open up. It may not even talk to you other than giving you pain and aches. That is one way of talking to you, right? I'd prefer a different form of communication, please. But our bodies will talk to us however it can, however we will listen. How's that? And so this is what I have pieced together. And it has been amazing for me to go from being a very conventional medical physician where I'm used to seeing patients, ordering labs, doing the histories, and then giving you your prescription and treatment plan to realizing, wait a second, there's all this stuff that's actually just as important. And I started leading people through this essential sequence. And guess what? Their health symptoms started to change. And we hadn't even done any of the medical work yet. 